Good kitty. Oh my god. <laughs> what's up you guys so welcome back to our channel first of all <laughs> and hello to all our new subscribers <laughs> he literally walked in the back of the camera and picked us up to do an intro so it wasn't so awkward because intros are awkward yes we're back and the better belly, than ever yes but the belly is missing as you guys can tell and you can probably hear over there right now she's sleeping today we're gonna be doing uh is it our or is it my your wouldn't be our because we're in this journey together. You are because we, you're the one that was going through all this pain. Our labor and delivery story because we went through this journey together. <laughs> Not just me, it's me and him and the baby. God. Isn't it? Some people have asked us if we can do our labor and delivery story, which we're going to be doing right now. We also do have a birth vlog, so go ahead and check that out. It's on our channel as well. There's a few things that wasn't shown. There's a few things that weren't shown on the vlog, so we're going to be telling you guys like about vagina. that. This foam. So, it all started... Uh, really? I go. Okay. okay. You guys, it was longer than 40 hours. I did not even know that. So, it all started, I think it was March 27th. I was having very, like, light contractions. Like, I was telling him, I was like, I'm having, like, weird cramps. And I was like, I think I'm contracting, but I don't know. So, I, like, kind of ignored it, and we went to his friend's house, Kevin's house, and we were hanging out at his house, and I was talking to his mom, and then I started getting, like, strong pains. To me, it felt strong at that moment, but, oh, girl, little did I know it was going to be strong. What if there's guys in there? Oh, boy. Little did I... <laughs> little did I know that that was nothing that hell was coming. We were sitting in his kitchen, and I remember my back was hurting, and you were texting your mom, huh? Yeah. And what did your mom say? Around then. That was a long time ago. She doesn't remember anything, guys. This is why you... Just don't, I don't remember anything. You don't confine in, guys. Look, she was looking for the bag for the camera. It was right in front of her the whole time. Her, I don't know where it's at, Sebastian. Do you help me find it? So, I was having contractions. He was texting his mom, and his mom was like, oh, she's in full-on labor or something like that. And then I was like, nah, it doesn't, it like hurts, but it's like tolerable. So then we came back home. Our three friends came over, and we we're all hanging out, and I was editing one of our videos, I remember. I was sitting right there in front of the counter, editing the videos, and his friends were over, and I remember they were all playing the game, whatever, like baby. Like 10 minutes apart, for 40 seconds long and I was like telling him and then that night we like stayed up late watching Vampire Diaries and then the next day my pains like it kind of like died down a little bit but it, they weren't like as frequent as like you know like they were 10 minutes apart or whatever so all day I was just like having contractions but they weren't like too close to the point where I was like okay I need to run and they the weren't even they weren't even bad during the day they weren't that bad yeah they were worse at night for some reason like at night when I was resting is when they were like really strong but he's talking about March 28th now you guys we went swimming and I noticed right when I got out of the pool my pains were way worse than they were before I don't know if it's because I had like no weight in the pool because you know how you're like floating and stuff so I didn't feel nothing but we just got here and we're outside already Sebastian's in the hot tub which I really wish I could get in but I'm not risking it I know I looked it up and they said he could be in there for 10 minutes but the hot tub's really hot so we're not gonna do that I got a contraction when I was driving here and I was like oh my gosh but I'm gonna get in the pool and hopefully this helps you guys I slept all day you guys because I was so tired and I'm still tired and sorry my hair looks like a mess it's been a, in a bun so yeah we're gonna go ahead and get in the pool I'll go ahead and bring you guys with me into the pool degrees and we're swimming i probably crazy because i'll probably end up getting sick but i just really needed to do something to kind of help with like labor and contractions and stuff i was gonna go walk but he didn't want to go walk because he got his boot and he feels like he can't walk with it plus he doesn't like going to the store because we always end up spending like money hopefully this helps i'm like really out of breath and she's sitting really low i'll show you guys i'm just exhausted and i think it's because labor is approaching as you guys can tell because i was having contractions all night and i was gonna go to the hospital but i didn't end up going to the hospital because i was like no i don't want to go and then they're like oh you're only one centimeter dilated we're gonna send you home so i'm just gonna keep swimming <laughs> Oh 
Let me show you guys what my stomach looks like right now. My belly. swimming for an hour and then afterwards we went to Stater Brothers real quick to get some something to make food. We started walking around at Stater Brothers. I felt like the pain coming in. I was like, oh my gosh, this is happening. Like I'm having contractions. And I kind of thought like, okay, I had contractions yesterday or whatever. This is just gonna keep going on for a week or so because usually that happens. So I was thinking, okay, maybe it's gonna last two weeks of me having these little dumb contractions here and there and it not hurting so bad and it dying down and just turning at night. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not ready for two weeks worth of pain. And then um, we are sitting here watching Vampire Diaries and she started having hella contractions. Like she started crying almost. So yeah, then we didn't sleep all night. I was up most of the night like contracting really bad. Like I'd fall asleep and then I'd wake up because I was having a contraction. And then he would wake up because he couldn't sleep because I was just kept contracting. On the 29th that morning. That's when we started vlogging. That's where you guys saw the first clip when it was 6 o'clock in the morning morning and he was vlogging telling you guys we didn't sleep I was starting to have like strong contractions they were pretty painful and they were coming frequently five minutes apart my doctor told me she's like okay when your contractions are five to seven minutes apart go ahead and come in so I was like okay and they're five to seven minutes apart I was like you know what I'm just gonna wait and he was like no like we should call like they're getting more frequent more frequent and so that's when you guys saw the clip of me calling when I called the lady told me a whole different thing here and now you have to wait till they're like two to four minutes apart. yeah two to four minutes apart and I was like okay my doctor's telling me this and then last thing for what this. longer than 30 seconds or something longer than a minute. But I was thinking like, okay, my doctor's telling me this, and then my, the nurse is telling me this. Like, who am I supposed to listen to? And then Sebastian's over here telling me this, and his mom's over here telling him this, and then my mom's over here telling me this. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm just gonna wait. If they get worse, whatever, we'll go. I was like, you know what? Let me take a bath to help my contractions. So once I got in the bathtub, I was in there for like an hour, and it helped a lot. Like, I felt more relaxed and stuff. My contractions kind of died down. Like, they weren't as frequent. And he was starting on the phone with his stepmom, and he was telling her what was going on. Like, telling her, I think the baby's coming today. I texted your dad because you were like, don't call my dad there again. Because I was like, you know what? Let's not tell anybody yet. Let's wait to see if they get worse. Because I don't want to, like, scare everybody. And everybody's like, oh my gosh, she's having a baby. Like, let's go to the hospital. Like, now. Yeah, go, 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 go. Yeah, like, we're going to get <laughs> I thought we were going to the hospital. He called my dad and then my dad told my mom and I was like, tell him not to come. Like, I wanted to be me and you laboring by ourselves for now. Like, let's just wait. Then my mom ended up showing up. I was taking a shower. I took a bath and then I took a shower. I don't know. She's like, I think we should go. And Sebastian's like, let's just go. So I was like, whatever. Like, if we go, you have to buy me Starbucks. So... <laughs> We ended up stopping at Starbucks. As you guys can see, I know so many commented who were like, is in labor still stops at Starbucks? You know, a Starbucks right. lover has to stop at Starbucks. Don't worry, she labor. reads all the comments. Yes, I do. Aw, oh, damn. Note this down. We haven't slept since the 27th. Probably like 10 minute naps every five hours. The sleep was basically like, you're about, like you're just, just falling asleep like, <sighs> You're back, you're Boom, wake back up. That's not, it doesn't even count. We were resting. We're resting our eyes. Yes. After we got Starbucks, we drove to the hospital. It took my mom about 40 minutes to get there. So we got Her? there. They took, I went into the triage. They were like checking me out. So they were like, when did you start contracting? You know, started asking me all these questions. Who is little baby? They started asking me all these questions and then they made me put the gown on and they told me, okay, you need to pee in the cup. And I was like, okay, good, because I have to pee. So, so they started hooking me up to all these monitors, to like the contraction monitor and then the monitor to monitor the baby. Right when I laid in that bed, I just started contracting like crazy. Like they were getting super painful. I don't know what it was about that bed, about the hospital beds or something. The but baby was like, <laughs> she knew we were here. She was like, yes, mom, like we were her? here. I her? need to get out. This hurt, this hurt. See the light. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's when the doctor came in and she checked me. And then when she checked me, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be like one centimeter, probably not even one centimeter. I ended up being two centimeters, which I kind of told I told him I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be like one or two centimeters and it's gonna be a waste of time. The cuerdas? The cuerdas is you you the cuerdas take con todos por por no, I told him, I was like, I'm gonna be one to two centimeters and this is gonna be a waste of a drive because they're gonna have to leave. So get that head, that's what I'm saying, man. I was like 
almost two centimeters. She's like, okay, I'm gonna make you two centimeters. So I don't know what she did, but she made me two centimeters. And she's like, okay, we're gonna monitor you for the next hour because she saw like something with the baby's heartbeat, like it dropped or something when she checked me. She thought that was like off. So she was like, okay, I'm gonna leave you here to monitor you. We're gonna give you a lot of water just to help. And then she's like, okay, can I have you walk around for about an hour. So I was walking around and then the nurse came out. She's like, okay, she wants you to walk around for another hour. So I'm over there walking around for another hour. After two hours passed, the nurse had me go back in the room and Sebastian's leg. He I just got my boot on the, yes. the day before. So he walked around with me for a little bit and then his leg started hurting so he went back to the room. It was like two days before. But I used my crutches when I walked because I was too damn scared to put any weight on. And then I learned how to walk in the living room. It was a big step from counter to counter, I'll tell you what. Oh my god. I had a one cup in one hand, something else in the other hand. I think it was my phone. And I was like, alright, here we go, here we go. I was like... And it started from there, it was like one step at a time. I one big baby step is what I like to call it. <laughs> Went back in, the nurse checked me. Oh my gosh, when that nurse checked me, it hurt so bad. Like, I don't even know why it hurt so bad. When the doctor checked me, it didn't hurt. But when that nurse checked me, she couldn't find my cervix. She was like, okay, you're only like two and a half after two hours of walking around. So she went and told the doctor. The doctor came back and she was like, okay, so you've only gone half a centimeter in two hours. So we're gonna go out and give you some medicine to help with the pain, maybe you sleep, give you a shot in your butt cheek and then she gave her a shot to booty and she was like Ugh. that shot hurt they put like three medicines in one shot and get, i was like you know what it's not gonna hurt the injection didn't hurt the needle the, was about this big one all in her ass beat you know like, me her ass beat oh my god ass cheek it hurt worse than the epidural you guys just saying so if they ever offer you a medicine just say no i mean you could take it if you can handle the pain but it didn't make a difference no it didn't it just made me sleepy and i was pissed off because i was so sleepy yeah. she still could feel all the contraction pain yeah she gave me the option of staying or leaving we we were both really hungry at this point. Well, we hadn't ate for a while. It was already like 12 o'clock and we were both starving. He had ate some crackers and I couldn't eat because I was in the hospital, which they don't allow you to eat. So I was like, you know what? Let's just leave. The pain's fine. Like I can handle it. I'll labor at home for a little bit longer. And the lady's like, you might have her later on tonight. And that was March 29th. Make sure your contractions are like getting stronger and they're closer. And to make sure that the baby was kicking and stuff. So she was like, if you feel like the baby stopped kicking or you feel like, like something's wrong, like come in or if you can't handle the pain anymore, just come in. We ended up leaving the hospital and I told him, I was like, I really want French toast. Like, that's my number one thing I wanted. I made him and my dad go get French toast. I was like, you know what? This is my last meal as a pregnant person. Like, I need to satisfy my cravings. They went to Steve's and then, they, you know, I get this little phone call from him and he's like, hey, you know what? They got no French toast. I was like, what? No French toast? 12 o'clock. I'm dying. My last day as a pregnant person. I can't even have my freaking French toast. So he's like, you know what? We're just gonna get hamburgers. I was like, you know, whatever like i'm just dying at this point i just need food so i was like you know what my pains are starting to get bad i'm gonna go lay down for a little bit the shots are making me super drowsy so i laid down my contractions weren't that bad at that point like they were starting to get bad but around four o'clock we did the resibo effect i think is What's what that? it's called and if you watch the birth video me and her sister were going like this with a blanket with a wrapped around her like halfway around her stomach just like under her stomach holding it up and kind of like rocking it like this and supposedly it's supposed to like make kind of like you're floating. Honestly, it really did help. Like I was having contractions and I couldn't even feel them. Like it felt so relieving. Also, my mom and my sister were putting like a hot bag of water on my back. So I got on the yoga ball and I like laid down on it kind of like this, you know, like resting on it. And that helped as well. Like 10 o'clock, they started dying down. And I was like, oh my gosh. You, and I Honestly, you probably would have been in labor for like another day or two if you didn't go to the hospital and then give you that, the whatever to, yeah. to well, boost it. Around, yeah, 10 o'clock, I fell asleep sleep and I kept waking up because for some reason like I said when I lay down my contractions just got worse is that when you fell asleep around like one o'clock I never fell asleep okay well around one o'clock I my closed my eyes and you <laughs> started going that ow, 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 ow. but way louder I'm seeing like <sighs> I try going through that pain <laughs> See, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you stop you me e <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Around one o'clock, guys, my pain started getting worse. About two in the morning, I downloaded the contraction app. For one hour straight, she had contractions for between two to five minutes. For at least a minute, 30 seconds each time. I think I still have a picture of it. They were bad, but at the same time, I was thinking like, okay, I don't want to go to the hospital and I'm only three centimeters dilated and I'm like in so much pain and it just disappoints me because I'm thinking like, okay, I'm going to have to last so long with this pain, you know? Everybody was sleeping at this point. It was like two o'clock in the morning. 
morning and I was having these really bad contractions and I honestly I I knew they were bad but I didn't know they were as close as they were telling me like I honestly thought they were so far apart even though they would like I had no breaks at all in between I was thinking like okay these contractions are probably like 10 minutes apart I'm probably just like falling asleep in between and I didn't even know so I think around 2 o'clock my dad came in he's like okay I think it's time to go like they had been listening to me for a couple and hours you kept saying Oh, no, I don't want to go yet, Obviously, the pain was getting stronger, and I was getting louder. And then it got to the point where the three of them were like, no, you have to go. Like, you're getting so bad. They couldn't even sleep through it. So at 3.30, that's when you saw him vlogging. He was, like, in so much pain. It was to the point I couldn't even walk. I couldn't even talk. You talked to me. I couldn't even focus. So we got in the car, and my mom was driving us to the hospital. She got there in 20 minutes. Like, I was like, oh, my gosh, my mom, this, she drops so fast. Like, she never drives that fast. I had, like, about 10 contractions. I was in the backseat too damn tired to realize that I was about to have a Baby, I was sitting there, my guess with me. <laughs> but you didn't vlog up. <laughs> no, as you guys can tell, we didn't vlog the drive there because he was asleep. I was screaming in pain, and my mom was over here driving, like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And then she like gave me her hand and I'd grab it and I'd squeeze it super tight every contraction, and my contractions were like two minutes long, I swear. Literally, the hospital was empty, you guys. We went to the emergency room and I was like, are they closed, mom? We went in there and he was like, okay, what are you here for? I'm like, I'm in labor. He looked at me like, oh shit. Like, he rushed. He's he like, like right. called the thing. He's like, all right, here, here, uh, here, sign this. And the guy came out and he was like, all right, let's go. Yeah, so he's in there pushing me and I'm having a contractions, like, breathe. Like, I don't even remember. I just remember he was telling me stuff and I was breathing and he pushed me into the elevator and, like, he was walking super slow because his leg was broken. The, so I took the other elevator. Yeah, so the nurse guy was like, okay, you know what? You can take the other elevator. We're gonna get you up there real quick. So so we got up there right away. They already have the room ready, the triage room ready. The nurse was in there. He pushed me in there, and she's like, "Okay, you need to put this gown on." Like, and she's like, "Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and check you." And that nurse was super nice. Like every contraction I had, she was like, "You're doing so good. Like just breathe." And like she was super super nice, and made me feel comfortable. She checked me. And she's like, "Okay, you're four and a half centimeters. We're gonna go ahead and admit you." And started talking so fast because I'm like getting into the story because I'm like, "Oh shit!" Like I remember this happening. She's like, "Do you want the epidural?" And I was like, "Yes." She's like, "Okay, do you want to wait till your pain gets worse, or do you want it now?" I'm like, "I want it now. Like give me the epidural." So so maybe about 10 minutes into being there, she was like, okay, we're gonna go ahead and get you into your room. So they took me into the room and she was like, the guy has one patient ahead of you. Like he's giving them the epidural. I had to use the bathroom. So I was like, okay, mom, can you help me to the bathroom? So literally I felt like I couldn't even walk to the bathroom. I had to poop and I was like, you know what? I can't even poop like. I told her, I was like, don't poop the baby out. Cause yeah. some people that happens to them, they like have to poop, but it's the baby. I went in the bathroom and I sat there for about 20 minutes trying to use the bathroom, like having contractions. And I was telling my mom, like, mom, I can't do this like this pain is so bad like I can't do this like I felt it feels like you're dying almost and then the anesthesiologist comes in and then I was like okay are you ready he's coming in so I got up sat on the bed and I was literally shaking because I was trying to figure out how am I gonna be able to sit through this epidural without moving I think it took about 45 minutes for the epidural guy to come in and actually give you the epidural but I felt faster than that to me I know it, but, seemed, it went by like it felt like 10 minutes but I looked at the time and he came in at like 650 when he yeah. came in and gave you the epidural so he came in and and I was sitting on the bed and the nurse is like, okay, you have to sit still. Like, even if you have a contraction, you have to sit still. And I was like, I told her, I looked at her, I was like, can you please hold me? Like, like, just you need to hold me in order for me to sit still because I can't sit still. So she gave me the pillow and you know how they give you the pillow and you're sitting like this. I was waiting, I was waiting for a countdown. They told Sebastian, they're like, you need to sit down because we've had people pass out and we can't have that. So Sebastian's sitting across from me and I'm sitting right here. I was gonna pass out because I was tired and I'm like. <laughs> I was waiting for a countdown for the guy to count down like, okay, one, two, three, I'm gonna sit the shot. No, I just felt the, the numbing shot and that's what hurts the worst. Honestly, you guys, everybody's right. The numbing shot hurts, hurts the worst. I had at least three contractions or four when he was giving me the epidural. So I'm sitting there screaming into this pillow. The nurse is holding me. She's like, you're doing good. You're doing good. Like making me feel good, but I'm still screaming. It's the worst thing ever having contractions. Well, they're telling you to sit still through your contractions when you can barely sit still sit still at all and this guy's sticking a needle in your back and you're thinking like if I move I could freaking be paralyzed or even worse something bad can happen you know something worse can happen so I'm sitting there screaming into the pillow for 10 minutes because they had to like clean the hell out of her back it took about five minutes to kick in slowly feel the contraction starting to die down like I could not die down but like the pain was starting to die down I couldn't feel it anymore and then Sebastian's like oh you're having a contraction do you feel it I'm like no I don't feel it like I was so happy like I turned into a whole different person like I felt like I was the exorcist before and then after the epidural I was just a whole new me. I wasn't even pregnant. I was watching, when she got the epidural, we were watching the contractions. They were like that. Yeah. 
Like that, like I'm not even joking. Thank goodness for epidural. Okay, so a nurse is like, okay, we're gonna go ahead and check you. I think an hour has passed already. And she's like, okay, you're five centimeters dilated. So I was like, okay, like, that's good. And they came back in about two hours later and checked her again. She was six, yeah. So it was already by then, it was like nine o'clock. They're like, okay, we're gonna break your water. So they came in, they broke the water. The nurses like have a monitor outside so they can monitor the people, the girls' like, contractions and monitor the baby's heartbeat. So I guess an hour had passed and she had seen my contractions were starting to die down after she broke my water like they weren't getting close they weren't getting stronger and she's like okay we're gonna start you up on pitocin because you're you should be having contractions like crazy like your water should have helped you and it wasn't helping me yeah then she started getting a fever and the doctors couldn't really figure out why so they thought oh maybe because she has too many blankets on her so they took the blankets off hour went by still had a fever and then they gave her some tylenol yeah right. he had a fever all the way till the baby was born even after five hours later they checked me and i was still six centimeters and i was still having a fever so they're like okay at this point, you should have already dilated at least like one centimeter more and you're not dilating. So she's like, right now, we're going to check you again in an hour. And if you're not dilated, we're going to have to go from there and we might have to give you a C-section. So at this point, we were looking at having a C-section. Like it was getting to the point where I was going to have to have a C-section. At that time, it was like almost 12 o'clock. And they came back in around two hours later and they checked me again. And they're like, oh, you're eight centimeters. Like you're doing like good. The nurse was so excited. She's had this, it's called like a peanut ball. It looks like one of those yoga balls, but like shaped as a peanut. And it goes between your legs to hold your legs open to like open the birth canal. It was also supposed to help the baby's head move into the proper position. I was supposed to help that, so they had me with the peanut ball in between my legs. I'd have to have it on one side and then they put me to the other side. Yeah. So throughout that time when I had the peanut ball, I started feeling pain on this little section on my right side. Like the epidural had wore off in one spot. I pressed the button twice and it didn't help. So I told the nurse, okay, it's starting to hurt really bad. Like I can feel all my contractions. The anesthesiologist came in, gave me an extra dose, and he's like, okay, this should help. I'll come back in 15 minutes and check on you. So he came back in 15 minutes, and I was like, okay, I still feel the pain, like it hasn't gone away. Can you give me another dose? He gave me another dose. He's like, okay, this should help. I'll be back in 15 minutes to check on you. So I was fine after that dose, and then they kept switching me side to side, and then an hour later, I told the nurse, okay, I'm starting to feel that pain again, and then he came back in. He's like, okay, that's weird. You shouldn't be feeling pain. He's like, okay, I'm gonna give you an extra dose. This one should help. I stopped feeling the pain, and there was one point where I did start feeling it again, but I kind of ignored it and it wasn't as bad as it was before. Oh. So about 3.30, the nurse came in. It was already about an hour later. Yeah, I was shaking and she was like, okay, you know what? They said usually when you're in labor and you, you start, start shaking. shaking, you're usually about 10 centimeters, like you're ready to go. Yeah, she's like, okay, so you're 10 centimeters dilated. She's like, we're gonna go ahead and get you to push a couple times to see if you got the pushing down and you know, like kind of like a practice run. She also had checked my temperature and she had saw, okay, she has a fever about like 101. So after... They broke my water, I was having fevers constantly. Like, I don't know what was going on. Like, I was cold and I was constantly shaking as well. So when I was 10 centimeters, that's when they started doing the practice runs. And that's when all my emotions came in, as you guys can see in the birth vlog. So like I said, if you haven't watched the birth vlog, go ahead and go check it out, it's on our channel. That's when me and Sebastian, like, we're like, oh shit, this is real, like, she's coming. She's actually finally coming, like, there's actually a baby aging here about to come out. She had me push for about 20 minutes. She had the doctor come in, so the doctor is feeling one pushing she's like okay the baby's like she's ot like she was she was the wrong way so they're like okay we're gonna have another doctor come in and this doctor was like explaining to me okay we're gonna try to move your baby like flip your baby all the way around like try to get her to be positioned right so he went in there with sam and he like moved her head kind of sideways he was like if for some reason your baby can't flip all the way around when you're trying to push her out we're gonna have to use forceps and if that doesn't work we might have to suction your baby out so i was thinking like okay i'm not not letting them do that like but no like I'm gonna try my hardest to push her out somehow magically get her to like do not turn around ah, he's so cute. sorry she's trying oh my gosh look how red she looks <laughs> okay sorry she's hungry you guys that's when the doctors came in and they had me start pushing I felt like super emotional and excited I was like oh my gosh like this is actually happening how'd you feel tired scared excited I was like you know what's funny you guys the doctor asked him do you want to see the baby's head come out to the baby's head crown and he was like no i don't want to see that and then once the baby started crowning he walked around and he stood there and he was like watching he was like <laughs> his facial expressions i was watching the whole time when i was pushing 
I told myself, don't look at him because if you look at him, you're just gonna scare yourself. I was pushing for about two hours. But it seemed like 20 minutes. Yeah, it felt like 20 minutes. And I kept like kind of falling asleep a little bit in between. And it was hard because I felt like I was gonna pass out when I was pushing. They put the mask on me, tell me to breathe, which helped a lot, the oxygen mask. He was standing down there where you could see like the baby coming out. And I could kind of see in the lady's glasses because she had glasses. I could kind of see what she was doing. So I really didn't want to look. So she had to cut me because the baby's head was like stuck. Thankfully, like after two hours, her whole body and her head did end up turning the proper way she cut me and he saw like i watched his face when she cut me like i could hear it too it was just like just like a thick just like if you ever cut a shoelace that's what it sounds like and i think that's when she told me okay you guys could get your camera ready she's gonna come out i had the epidural but i felt when she came out like like it was kind of like a relief like it was just like like i can't explain it like you guys have to like go through it to understand what it feels like but it was like the best feeling ever and like right when like i saw her that's when like i just lost it and i just started crying and i was like oh my gosh like this is actually like our baby like this was there's was actually something in my stomach moving and whew, every time i watch the video i cry every time i look at her when she's getting longer getting bigger i cry her belly button fell off she started crying she yeah. like that cheeky the belly button fell off <laughs> no it's she just like she is so big it's such an emotional experience like having a baby you just have this emotional attachment to your baby especially after carrying them for nine months it's like how did you feel when she was born when you first saw her come out i was excited did you actually believe that that, that little thing was in it yeah i didn't know she looked like a person but <laughs> I she was gonna come out looking like a fucking frog or something her and you know what's funny you guys right when she came oh, out baby. if you guys saw in the clip her eyes were wide open like she, like she was like oh my gosh like hello world like i was she was ready to come out i don't know if you guys saw if you guys did watch the birth vlog there was one clip where the doctor was shaking me so after she came out i didn't remember them putting her on me i asked him did me and her do skin to skin because i don't remember for about 10 minutes we were doing skin to skin and i just remember during that time i kind of felt like i was dozing off kind of i felt like i was gonna puke and i felt like I, everything was turning into a blur like i felt like i was gonna black out i remember saying okay i don't feel good and then i think i remember one of the nurses telling me or somebody told me my vomit back thing was right there so i was like no like i really don't feel good so one of the nurses i guess grabbed the baby for me because she she saw I wasn't feeling good. So I grabbed the baby and Sebastian's standing there. And I remember telling him, you need to go with the baby. Like, go with the baby. Don't even come with me. Like, I'll be fine. Go with the baby. So after that, I don't remember what happened. You know what happened. So go ahead and explain what you saw. After they took the baby, the nurse realized that she still had a fever and stuff. And after the, the doctor left, the other nurse was trying to, like, clean up, like, stop the bleeding and stuff. So she's like, oh, I think I got it. And then she pushed on her stomach and pff, way more blood came out. Probably, like... I want to say like a full cup of blood pushed out and she's like, okay, go get the doctor. So the doctor came back in there with like 10 other doctors and nurses and stuff. They started like freaking out. They were like, Raquel, can you hear us? Wake up. Like Raquel, Raquel. And that's probably like the scariest moment of my life. They started like doing a bunch of stuff. Ex explain. Okay. My mom was like, she'll be okay. And I was sitting there like, she's going to die. Your mom was like, don't think negative. You know what my mom told me? She told me, she's like, I was so scared. She's like, I honestly thought the worst. She's like, I thought you were going to die. She's like, I at that moment i started praying she told me she didn't want to show her emotions because she knew if she showed her emotions that would just make him even worse than what he already was because he already felt like i was gonna die and he already felt so scared because he just saw me like like laying there not responding to anybody at this time she's already lost like two like iv bags i'm not joking either they kept pushing on her stomach and you just watch just blood just flowing out and flowing out and went and got this balloon thing you know those balloons that like have like the rubber band on it and they're big and you blow them up and you go bum 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 like it's it looked like one of those and they put it in her and put these big like gauze, gauze pads, pads like big big ones all squished up and they put it in there with the balloon and pumped it up what was happening i guess the doctor explained to me is that even like throughout birth i noticed that my contractions weren't as strong as they were supposed to be and i could even feel my stomach how my uterus wasn't contracting properly and after birth like you say your uterus is supposed to contract and go back to the, its regular size like start contracting slowly and go back to its regular size so mine wasn't doing that mine was just staying open and it was starting to fill up with blood and you know all that was happening the proper word is hemorrhaging or whatever because i'm started losing a lot of blood how long were they in there for 45 minutes. She's non-stop working on you and doing a bunch of stuff. And I watched the doctor shove his whole arm inside her vagina. His whole arm all the way to his elbow. He had like a long ass glove all the way up his arm. His elbow went straight all the way in there. 
He was going like this and shit. Like, you can see him pushing on your stomach. He's pushing on his stomach down here. Yeah. I remember when he did that, okay? I woke up at one point when they were working on me. I don't know why I woke up, but for some reason, I woke up. I peeked my eyes open, and I remember right when I woke up, I felt everything they were doing. I felt somebody, like, they were pushing on my stomach. Like, someone was socking my stomach. And I could just see the doctor. Like, you know how when you're first waking up and you start opening your eyes a little bit? That's what I meant. My eyes were that open, like, a little bit. And I remember seeing the doctor, like, standing right here pushing on my stomach like pumping my stomach I don't know what he was doing but I felt everything and I was like oh my gosh like this hurts so bad and she was still losing blood yeah and I remember feeling that pain and right when I felt that pain I just passed out I forgot one part the best part of the whole thing is when I clipped the umbilical cord or no she was she had like the little they're like locking scissors type things but they don't cut it like cut the umbilical cord and blood just all over her and all over the room. It was funny as hell. She probably deals with that every day. And now the lady's like, oh, you barely missed me. But so I remember feeling everything. Like I like passed out, but I could still hear people. I could hear somebody. And I remember them saying, okay, they needed to do something. And they gave me a shot on my thigh. I remember feeling it. Someone injected me in my thigh. And I remember saying she was gonna inject me in my thigh. And after that, I passed out completely to the point where I don't remember anything. Everybody was so scared because it's like, I went through this whole, like, such a chill birth. Like, not chill, like, obviously it was like a long birth. I mean, long labor. But then, right when she came out, it's like everything just went downhill. I don't know how long passed by, but I remember waking up. Actually, at this time, it's already like 9 o'clock. I was so mad. Oh my gosh. Why did this have to happen? Like, it's not just because people were waiting in the waiting room to see her. I was mad because I felt like I got that time, you know, that time you get to spend with your baby after birth, like that got ripped away from me because my body decided to mess up on me. Like it just decided to go stupid. I didn't get to see when they weighed her. I didn't get to see when they measured her. I didn't get to see when she got her first shots. I didn't get to see none of that because I was over here in the freaking bed getting worked on, passed out, not remembering anything. People thinking I'm dying because I'm losing so much blood and that made me so mad because it's like I got that ripped away from me all because my stupid uterus didn't want to freaking contract back to normal. Makes me scared for her to get pregnant again. Look at her, look at her, look at her. <laughs> She's like, mm-hmm. So later on, I find out that for some reason I got an infection in my uterus. I don't know when it happened, I don't know how it happened, but that's why I was having fever to you guys. I don't know how, they didn't know, whatever, but the fevers were the sign that I was having an infection. And thankfully, like, Thank God she didn't have the infection or anything. And that's another reason why, you guys, I didn't get around to posting the birth vlog for a while. And I felt so bad because everybody was asking me about it. Sebastian's like, when are you going to post it? Like, I'll edit it. And I was like, no, I want to edit it after birth and stuff. It was just, like, such a rough time for me. Like, the, he the healing process and stuff. It was hard, you guys. And that's why I just want to apologize to everyone that the birth vlog got up so late. Now I'm getting back to myself, you know, mentally and physically. And we're starting to adjust to the new lifestyle of having a baby. So now we have a little baby girl. I did a gym. <laughs> we're super happy. Definitely fun experience. It was it was bad for a little bit at night. It was like from the like first week. I one think. to four, she would not sleep. She would cry, 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 cry. And then now it just comes to find out that she was just hungry. Yeah, noisy baby. So we hope you guys enjoyed our labor and delivery story. Don't forget, <laughs> don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Go check out our birth vlog if you haven't watched it yet. We'll put the link in the description if you guys haven't seen our birth vlog yet. Yeah, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, and <laughs> we don't have Twitter. Or yeah, anything. yeah. So the only the only social medias we have is Instagram and Snapchat. So if you guys want to go ahead and follow us around on that, because we do post more fre frequently on our Instagram and our Snapchat. We'll go ahead and put those down below as well. We're gonna show you guys how different she looks from the birth one now. What lady one? When she gets unread. There we go. She's like, look how big she is. She's so long, you guys. She weighs already eight pounds and is 19.7 inches long. Say hi. Who is it? Look it. Look it. Germ buddies. Look it. She's so white that she turns red. Look at this. Look at this baby. Look at this baby with her dimples. Okay, let me put you down now. Hope you guys enjoyed the labor and delivery labor story. Labor and delivery upstate story. Say bye. Bye, Jim. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>